Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Topoco Lodge. Church retreats, corporate retreats, marriage retreats, church picnics, family reunions. Topoco Lodge is the perfect setting with all the fine lodging and dining options you could ever possibly need, including, see it there in the photo, they've got their own theater. So if you're doing the business meeting, you need that. Topoco Lodge, that is the place to go. Check out topoco.com to learn more. All right, back with all of our VFLs, Sterling, Daniel, Will, Brian. Uh, everybody knows that Tennessee gets off to slow starts on offense. Let's take a look at what they've done versus Power 5 teams. That's West Virginia, Florida, and now Georgia. In the first quarter, they've been outscored 31 to nothing in those games. Wow. That's not good. Mm -hmm. They're outscored in the second quarter 25 to 10. They get some life on offense after halftime. But third and fourth quarter, you're giving up 34 and 35 points per quarter in those, mm -hmm. two, in those three games. Um, that's an average of 23 second-half points versus Power 5 yeah. teams. All right, now part of that may be you're just worn down. Uh, you don't have the depth. But question is, what's the bigger concern? Slow starts on offense, poor finishes on defense. Uh, it's definitely the slow starts on offense. Um, when you have an offense that's not that talented, you definitely can't afford to start slow because you can't come back from it. And also, when you start slow and you can't sustain any drives, you put your defense on the field too long. And that's, that leads to them getting tired later in the game. So uh, we got to address this slow offense, and we, we can't start below when we don't, we don't have offensive threats. And the problem is, too, with the slow offense, the slow offense and the pounding on the defense is going to build up over the year, mm -hmm. right? Because when you have to be out there, Yesterday, Georgia had the ball 37 and a half minutes. You only had it for 22 and a half minutes. They owned the whole third quarter. That's right. It, after that, man, it just it starts building up a game after game after game. There's only so many plays you got, and when it continues to happen, where the offense can't keep third down, third and one, they can't make a first down. That's a problem, and that ends up happening at the end of the game mm. when the defense is tired. Two yard carries turn into five yard carries and six yard carries. Yes, that's right. where you start losing. Well, the thing you're making what Will is saying, and, 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 and I agree with that, because offense is considered slow if you don't score 24 points in this day and age, or if you don't score 30. So I'm excited about not only the team getting healthy in this off week, but these incredible offensive minds like Coach Johnson, Coach Winky, Heisman Trophy candidate, quarterback, Coach Coach Helton, those guys getting together and making that offense more productive in the second half of this season over this off week. There'll be some serious self-scouting. Daniel, which do you think is more important? Do you think the slow start on offense, the poor finish on, sec on the defense, or do you agree with everybody else that the poor defense is a result of the slow start on offense? You know, I think the defense is a definite result of the slow start on, on offense, but I don't know if it, you know, they've really been slow the whole year when you, come, when you play these five or the five teams. You oh, know, even, even yesterday, the drive that we had that we scored on the second touchdown was only given to us because of Georgia getting, I think it was the personal foul penalty mm -hmm. when Kirby Smart had to pull the guy off the field. Help, yeah. um, and, and so it's just, it, it's one of those things that your talent's not, not there yet to really sustain the drives and, and your defense is going to suffer right now mm -hmm. for it. Okay, I wasn't going to go here uh, because I know fans, some of the fans out there don't want to hear this, but talking about it on set, we'll go there uh, because <laughs> if people here are saying it, let's say it out loud. You guys didn't necessarily think Georgia was throwing everything they had at Tennessee yesterday. No, no, no. I, I, I don't. I, I've watched a couple of Georgia games this year, and I, I've seen them play a lot more sounder game than what they played against us yesterday. And they could just be playing a bad game. That's a possibility also. But I've seen some things that let me believe there was different nuances. There were schemes they were trying against us that is not necessarily part of their normal playbook, especially on defense. And on offense, occasionally a couple times, they worked on their passing game. They brought in the backup quarterback to do a couple of different wrinkles and plays. When they really knew in that, that second half especially, mm -hmm. they could hand the ball off and they were going to get as many yards as they needed to keep the drive alive and keep it moving down Yesterday the on our Fox pregame show, that's exactly what Josh Ward previewed. He said he expected Georgia to throw the ball yesterday to work on their pass game against Tennessee, and we all kind of – well, moaned, groaned, laughed, mm -hmm. whatever, saying, gosh, that's where you are now that other teams can go out there and, well, let's work on this against Tennessee. But if that's what you guys thought yesterday, I thought people should hear it. All right. <laughs> when we come back, we'll have Josh Ward back out here along with Jimmy, Bob, and Chuck. I got, uh, we're going to talk about in-game coaching decisions from Jeremy Pruitt. We're going to talk about some numbers comparing 17 to 18. Not the two numbers, the two years. Anyway, come on back. we got good stuff.